Hey guys, welcome back. And uh, we're in the garage today in South Carolina. It's like really cold outside. It's probably uh, in the 30s. It was down in the 20s, I think, last night. So we uh, I'm bored and I'm just looking for something to do. So I'm gonna work on the Corvair today. And um, I have had this laying around. I'm gonna show you here. This is a fuel pump, electric fuel pump that I've had laying around for a month or so now. And I think I'm just gonna put it in. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's do it. Okay, let me start by saying I got this thing on eBay for like 10 bucks. And I put these little connectors on there. I had this brass piece laying around. And I also had this gauge laying around, which you can see I got a few more. Um, but it came with this fitting here, this fitting. And I'll show you what else. It came with a couple uh, rubber connectors. It came with a mount. So you can mount it and you know just all your standard stuff so what i'm going to do is the corvair if you don't know it uses a mechanical fuel pump which is great i mean honestly that's probably the way to go is to keep the mechanical pump but i don't like to do things the simple way so it's carbureted and this is the fuel line coming in here it goes to the pump Pump rides on a small little cam that goes up and down as the engine spins, and it, it there's a diaphragm in here, and it just pumps five to seven psi up to the carburetor. Pretty simple. Um, the issue I have is that after two or three days, this thing starts to squeak like a real high pitch uh, noise, and I come to find out it's it's something about the the oil or lubrication to the cam that pumps this thing. If I pull it apart and I put some oil on the cam, on the shaft, uh, on the lifter, it uh, the sound goes away for a few days. So then it comes back. So I don't know if it's this engine was rebuilt before I got it. I don't know if there's an issue with the oiling to the cam or there's just an issue, issue with this pump itself. But whatever, I'm just going to do away with it um, and put electric. I'm going to put it right there, a little electric pump. And I'm just going to, for now, I'm going to use the lines that I have. And um, eventually, I'm just going to put a braided line directly to the carb. But for now, uh, I'm just going to kind of stub it in here because I don't have the braided line yet. So let's get to it. All right, fuel line is out. So the fuel line is out, no going back now. I for, forgot to mention that there is a, where's it at? There's an inlet, oh there we go, can you see that? Out, so we gotta make sure, obviously we put the out to the out. So I cut this um, strip of just vinyl and I'm going to use that as an isolator. I learned this the hard way on the Nova. The vibrations from the fuel pump tend to uh, make its way through the frame or the body of the car and you can hear a buzzing. So um, this pump I don't think is that powerful, but anyway, I'm just going to do it just in case. Okay, so I needed to get this um, 3 8 inch um, drill bit. Close the back up. And uh, I'm gonna use this to mount this and 
place. So now I've got that mounted in there and I might have to run to the store. I'm maybe just gonna grab some fuel line to run it directly over to the car. All right, heading to the store. We're gonna go get, um, I'm gonna go get some hose to fit this. It says eight millimeter. Um, it looks more like three eighths, but I'm just gonna take this and uh, see what they got. So let's go, we're going to O'Reilly's. We're in the Jeep. Before we get parts, we need to do one thing. All right, y'all know I like Boost, and not just for cars. Boost to get the project done. All right, got our hose. So I got the hose and I got some wire um, because I think we're gonna have to wire the pump to the ignition. All right, we're back in the garage and we've got the hose. So we're gonna go ahead and route this. I'm gonna route this uh, to the carburetor from the pump. So one thing I didn't notice, this is 5 sixteenths, that fitting, but then I come over here and this thing's pretty huge. So I have to um, try and get this hose on there. That this fitting right here, sorry, this fitting right here is just a little big compared to this hose. So I'm gonna put a little something on here to make this a little easier to get on. So I'm just gonna put a little three in one oil on there and wipe that around. Hopefully, get this thing on there. There we go. It's a little tight, but we're gonna get it. I just gotta get enough to get the hose clamp on there. We should be good. <laughs> All right, that's probably good enough. There's the um, lifter or push rod. I guess you could say it's a push rod for the pump. So it just rides up and down, pumps the fuel. And here is, oops, here is the fuel pump. And you can see it pushes on this pin here. And every time it pushes on this pin, there's a little diaphragm in here with a check valve and it just sucks in and pumps out. Pretty simple. All right, so you might wonder how am I gonna figure out this wiring? And the answer is hopefully in here. So I'm gonna look at this diagram I have here and try and figure out if there is a wire that comes from the ignition switch right there and makes its way back to the engine harness um, connector here. So, 
I'll be back in about 10 minutes and hopefully have an answer. Okay, so what I ended up doing, I found that the brown wire coming from the ignition switch doesn't supply the proper voltage. There, there's a voltage loss when you turn the pump on to the point where the pump won't run. So that didn't work. The pink wire that comes back and feeds the resistance wire gives me the 12.3 volts that I need to run the pump. And um, so that's the wire I ended up using. And I'll show you now what I did. Um, I spliced into that pink wire because there wasn't much wire there. So let me show you. Okay, so in the rear engine, you can see here, I actually cut the insulation away from the pink wire under this and I soldered the red wire to it. And that's gonna feed my pump. And then my, my negative is just gonna go right to my battery. So um, I believe that this will be okay. It's a little bit of a small gauge wire, but this pump, really doesn't draw any current, so not too worried about it. Um, the only thing it's feeding is this resistance wire, which is part of the ignition, um, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we're gonna fire it up. Let's see what happens. I've got, um, can't really see it, but I got about, this is with everything off. It's still actually holding some pressure, so there must be a little bit of a check valve in there or something about the way that pump just holds, maintains the pressure. So about five PSI. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. I'll turn the ignition switch on here. And you can hear it. It's actually really quiet. And it's running. And you can see there, we're maintaining right around eight. Still going nine PSI. So that is perfect. And one thing, I wish I had a DC amp probe, but I'll know if this wire gets hot, that's gonna be an issue, but it's not really hot at all. So, all right, we're gonna test it out and drive it and see what happens. Sorry, it's so dark in here. Um, so we took the car out, everything was good. Um, we took it for like an hour long drive and um, maintained fuel pressure perfectly, no issues. So um, I hope that was helpful for someone out there and um, catch us on the next one. Like and subscribe.